Hey, what's up, YouTube? John here with L Explore. So today's episode, or today's video, we're gonna be talking about the desk caps that I talked on, about on the last video, and we're gonna be talking about the cutoff line. All right, so stay tuned. So for this project, you'll need the last fit auto lighting dust caps for the LX470. You'll need two of them, one for each side. What I did is I went out there and I put it on there and I figured out how I wanted to orient the wires. And so on this one, I wanted it to be on the bottom. So on, you'll see right here, it'll say lock and open and it, I made a little uh, dot right there where I'm gonna actually drill a quarter inch hole. You'll need two red wires, two black wires, uh, a pair for each side. Definitely go on a larger gauge, right, which is a smaller number than what is in place. Don't go, don't go anything thinner is what I'm trying to get at. You'll need four female spade lugs and you'll need four on the male side on the spade lugs, all right? Also a very wise idea is shrink tube. All right. That's going to, since these uh, spade lugs are not shielded, they're gonna be sitting inside that cap and the electri electricity is gonna be going through these spade lugs. Since they're metal, they can ground out on each other, and that's something we don't want. Uh, the alternative to that is if you don't have shrink tubing, electrical tape. Also, you'll need a drill with a quarter inch drill bit. Uh, that drill bit could actually, that size will vary because uh, I'm using, and I don't even know what size wire this is, probably 18 gauge. Since I'm using that, along with their shrink tube, I figured that it'll probably be a quarter inch hole. Also tools to use would be diagonal wire cutters and some sort of crimping tool. And also a heat source if you're going to be using the shrink tube. Let's start drilling. Perfect. Now some might say like, oh, hey, now it's not gonna be waterproof because it's it was completely sealed. Well, there's only one way to get those wires in there and that's this way. I didn't wanna cut into the OEM housing and cause some sort of leak or uh, a way for dust to get inside. At least this way I can run the wires through with shrink tubing, All right? run them both through on either side. And these wires, I cut them to be about six inches each. Now, the reason why I didn't just solder on this wire onto the wires that are already, or to the OEM wires, is that I wanted to make sure that I could still uh, use that old housing. Cause I'm just gonna in, keep it in line. I'm gonna keep the housing in there uh, just in case I do have a problem that I can always refer back to that original housing with those original connectors. So it's gonna be just like this. I can always silicone that drilled out hole and make sure that it is airtight and watertight. So remove the wires from that cap. Remove the approximately a quarter inch on each end of those wires. So I've already placed this, this black wire into the shrink tube. I'm gonna slide the red wire in as well and create a pair, All right? Make sure that 
created a pair, make sure that they're equal length, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll shrink that up. So some might say, hey, you have that crimping tool that has all those beautiful little holes, right? Well, I uh, I used to to uh, work on sound systems, and this was the the tool that I always used. So it, it's I, I I do forget that that does strip wires as well. So it should look just like that, All right? And then we could put a little dab of silicone right there, another dab on the inside, and it'll be completely sealed. You have to excuse the uh, the mess here. So take the spade, one of the female spade connector, throw it on there. I take and crimp it this way, so. It, collapses as you can see it's not collapsed all the way so do that on the the positive side so you'll have two females on one side and two males on the other side All right, so now, now we want to go to the other side and we want to put on a protective layer right there. <clears throat> so inherently, if we did the male side and you put one of the shrink wrap on, you would never be able to put that spade connector, that male spade connector onto a female end. So you wrap the female end, whoops, and we'll keep it color coded. That way it'll match. And that way when it starts shrinking, it'll cover that. Now, you might be asking, or you might want to know the orientation. So the females will be on the inside of the cap. The males will be on the outside of the cap. So these will plug into the OAM wiring. These will plug directly into the, to the lights. So, cap number one is done. All I'm going to do is add some silicone, and you guys all know how to add silicone to something, so and make sure that you do the, the next one the exactly the same way. So I'm trying to balance this camera here. There we go. So LED light, we have those spade connectors right there. The dust cap, I'm going to put the spade connectors from the dust cap to the light. All right, so everything fits perfectly. They're not going to ground out on each other. I want to make sure that those wires go back into the housing. So the way I wanted to orient the wires is I want them to be down on the bottom. <clears throat> so now that that's all in, I left the old cap in there. 
All right, just in case I wanted to put the halogen bulbs back in for any reason. Just keep it original. So, positive to positive, which is red to, re red to green. And then you have a, like a blackish or dark colored brown wire to the black. <clears throat> so on this one, I'm going to wrap that in... I'm gonna wrap that heat shrink. I'm gonna take this off, put heat heat tubing over it, and then wrap it. Hey, always a good time to test the light out before you do the heat shrink. So put your connectors on, test it out, and then put the heat shrink on. That way you know that it's gonna be okay. Um, also, take a look at that cap. That cap right there fits perfectly. Um, and when you go to install the driver side, just make sure you disconnect that battery. I would probably remove that battery. Check out my video um, on part one of this. Uh, where I change out the lights. So this right here is driver side. Now it still has the OEM connectors. The other side I had to replace because one of the connectors was brittle and it just completely fell apart. So these ones won't require a heat shrink because they're still shielded, right, or covered when I put those spades in. So look at that, quick check. It works, it works, it works, it works. Uh, so there you have it. LED lights installed. Super easy. You know, those dust caps were a perfect fit. Actually, they, they look OEM. Uh, nice seal that are that, that's on them. The only thing I had to do was make that slight modification, uh, add a little silicone on the inside, and now it is completely sealed. So last episode, I had a couple of questions that came through. And they even came on Instagram as well. Hey, where's the cutoff at on these LEDs? I don't want to blind anybody ahead of me. That's a great concern and a great question. So we're going to head outside. I'm going to aim the Lexus right to the garage door, turn on the lights. I'm not going to geek out by measuring the height of, of, the, uh, of the beam. You'll just be able to see that clear, defined light that goes all the way across. All right, let's go check it out. So here it is. I'm approximately 12 feet away from the, uh, the garage door. And then you can see that clear defined light all the way across. That's pretty much spot on from what the halogen bulbs were at. But that is a wider light. And you can tell that it's only probably like four feet above the ground. Because each panel right there is what like, it's gotta be like 24 inches. So maybe we're like 36 inches high. Really happy with last fit. They've, you know, from the quality of the bulb to the the amount of light that it, it that it puts out with it, the dust cap that they provided, I couldn't be happier. You know, it, it it's updated the look of my of my of my rig, and it's functional. It's one of those modifications that I think is a must. And I believe that the price is right as well. So, you know, leave a comment down below, you know, and let me know like, hey, was that what you're looking for? Because the, from what I understand what the cutoff is, is that defined line, that it's not putting light out, uh, out ahead. Do you guys want to see measurements? Do you want to know like, hey, what is it out of 25 feet? I can tell you this, that I know that those those projectors right there are are adjustable so hey maybe that defined light you know maybe it was a little bit too high you know being at 36 inches from 12 feet away but i know that i can adjust it down so if you like this video press that like button if you want to know more about these the last fed auto lighting bulbs for the 100 series or any other vehicle please leave me a comment or check out the link below until next time, thanks again for watching.
and we'll see you either out on the trail or in the next video.